YouTubers, Ted here with my good buddy Odin. Um, winter time's milling time for me. I have all my gear out, so I figured I'd do a once over of my four primary mills. Uh, give it a quick once over what each one is, what the features are, how they differ, what's good about them, what's bad about them. I'm going to start with an 18 inch mill. I'm going to move forward from 18 to 28 inch, 28 inch to 36 inch, and 36 inch to 52 inch double ended. Um, we're going to talk a little about the saws that I use while we're at it. And I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Any comments? Love to hear them. Uh, click likes if you like it. Subscribe if you like it. Doesn't really matter to me. I'm too old to want to be a YouTube star. Okay, first, before we even start with the mills, we're going to talk about saws. Uh, this is the 18 inch mill, and you're going to notice it is on a still 090. Um, powers everything. <clears throat> when I mill, I use almost exclusively 090s. For the exception of this 18-inch mill, if I'm doing dimensional lumber, I'll use a 28-inch mill on the 090 for sizing. And then for the smaller cuts, like if I cut a 6-inch slab and I want to cut that into 2 by 6s I will put this on a Husqvarna 288. And uh, <coughs> this is a big saw. This is almost 90 cc's, ton of power, super fast. On the 18 inch mill, I do use 28 inch bar. And the reason I use the 28 inch bar is because I like to have the extra teeth, more teeth, less sharpening. I do use a regular um, milling chain on this with the half score tooth and the regular full tooth. The only difference I use is that I file my cutter heads to zero degrees. Um, I find it cuts smoother. It cuts just as fast, but more importantly, if you have to sharpen, you can sharpen from the same, every tooth from the same side of the saw. Uh, sorry, truck going by. You can sharpen every tooth from the same side of the saw, and that's kind of important. Uh, we're going to take a closer look at the uh, teeth on the 090, where this is cut to 90 degrees. It's cut, you know, square. But this is just semi-chiseled chain. Um, I use these saws in the field to the 090s as well. I use them for felling. I use them for blocking up really big stuff. I run up to a 48-inch bar on them. Um, <clears throat> and that's, that's in the field. For milling, I run up to a 96-inch bar dual-headed. But anyway, this mill, 18 inches on this saw, is a really nice match. I have milled with the 18-inch mill on a Husqvarna 570, which is a 70cc saw. It does the work, and quite frankly, it's as small as I, was go I would go, and I really find it a little bit underpowered. I'd like to see it on like an 064 or 088 or uh, 288, you know, or 88, MS 880, what it is, that's what it is these days. Um, Power is everything for milling. So that being said, let's take a nice close look at uh, the 18-inch mill. Okay, this is an 18-inch homemade mill. Um, it's very simple. It's three-quarter by three-sixteenths. Three-sixteenths is that? Eh, it might be an eighth. Let me check that. It was stock I had laying around. I do know it's three-quarter inch tube steel here, and it is... Yeah, it is eighth inch steel. Um, excuse me. Uh, it is eight, 18 eighth inch steel. It is heavy. Um, it is rigid. It is super heavy. And it is super simple. All it is is a box of steel with legs. As you can see, there's just bolts where I welded on two nuts onto each of these inline pieces of steel that are welded at a 90. And all that lets me do is clamp it down. Um, this is the same stock. I use these legs for my 28 inch mill as well. And it, it's a good mill. I mean, it's a good, super basic mill. It has no measuring increments on it whatsoever. It has no, uh, no m metering whatsoever. Everything has to be measured. And to do that, I just use blocks of framing lumber, inch and a half, 
I have a couple of pieces of half inch plywood to make up half inches. So, one, uh, you know, put in a two by four on the flat and you got an inch and a half mill, which is the, really the basically the bottom I can go with this mill. If you put in two pieces stacked up that are an inch and a half, obviously you have three inches. You could turn it on its side for three and a half inches on its side, half inch a piece of plywood. It's four inches. I block the sides up both at the same time. And uh, it's a little hard to move. There you go, sometimes. I just put the blocks in like this, push it down on the blocks on both sides, tighten it up, knock the blocks out. Uh, the legs use the same type of clamping that you see on a lot of the production mills. It's just a piece of tube, piece of tube on the bottom. The piece of tube on the bottom has uh, a bulb welded to it so that you can't, or nut, excuse me, welded to it so you can't lose your bottom nuts because it sucks to lose a nut. And all of the hardware, see, this is where it's very different than uh, production mills. The hardware on this is all different. These are grade eights up top, and that's so that they bite into the mild steel legs. These are grade eight nuts. They're harder than the bolts that are used on the clamp. The bolts that are used on the clamp are grade three. Now there's a reason I do that. Actually, there's two reasons I do that. One is, is you never strip out the grade 8 with the grade 3, so you don't have to be grinding things off or replacing, which would kind of suck, all right? Um, the beauty of having them welded on there is, is you only need one half-inch wrench to do it, and these these are uh, these are half-inch heads on these, so that makes it 7 sixteenths as, as opposed to, uh, all right, these would be 7 sixteenths. These would be 3 8 shank. Um, sorry about that. But they're narrow in diameter, they're softer steel, which means if you have some sort of problem, a lot of times a chain will get a little loose and throw off the end of the bar. You know how it, it, uh, it kicks out when it's coming around. It'll hit this hardware. It doesn't do as much damage as if you have harder steel. And that's a big deal. As far as the legs are concerned, again, this is just welded at a 90 here we'll turn it like this for you this is just welded as a 90 the bottom piece and this piece are the same size and there's like a little quarter inch piece in here to keep it up and give your chain room to go through um, it has the standard slides on it they're just a piece of eighth inch steel that i bent so that it rides smooth on the log on the live side where the power head is and that's it this is a super simple mill. Um, I really like it. It was easy to build. I actually, I had all this steel laying around from another project. Um, and it really, it did. I think this might even be, this, these skids might be pieces of ground out bed frame. But uh, I, I needed a small mill for when I was doing lumber. And uh, I was very pleased with what I came up with. The only other thing that you really have to do if you're doing this, we're, I'm going to do a mill build. I want to do some improvements. Is you just got to make sure that the bottom is ground smooth, that the welds are ground smooth. And so it glides over like a, a rail or if you're just going planking off lumber or on top of the lumber. So that's it on an 090. And now we will move to the 28 inch mill. All right, this mill is the bigger brother of the other mill. It uses the same legs. Um, I need to make another set. It would be a little easier on me. I could So I could use this mill and the 18 inch mill on the another saw at the same time. But it does use the same legs, you know, and exactly the same legs. Uh, I overcame one of my errors uh, that I had when I built the 18 inch mill. And that is on this one, I paid attention to put my hardware pointing to the inside. Um, originally, the other one had it pointing out towards the muffler, which made it very difficult to tighten this up. Um, that being said, um, you have to, with this mill, be sure that when you clamp the bar on, you push the mill down as far as it can go, and you tighten these, and then you clamp your bar on, you adjust it and clamp your bar on, because if you don't, you may find yourself in a funny position where when you go on a deep cut, and this is deep. Um, 
I think this is 24 inches deep. You can drop a 24 inch cut. So if you want to cut a cant out of a 24 inch log, you make your top cut and then you could just drop right down and make your bottom cut um, and then square those off so that you can make the next two cuts without having to roll the log or get too complicated about readjusting things. Anyway, that is, yeah, yeah, it's, it's 20, 24 inches on the leg, which means you have six inches here. So if you can go an 18 inch drop on that. And that's, that's, that's considerable. It, it, I have yet to have run into a 24 inch log where if I'm milling a cant right off the bat, this is not deep enough. Um, it is a lighter steel because it's bigger and it is made of steel. Again, you got to do grind the bottoms. Um, and there is one real benefit to a steel mill and using steel instead of aluminum gives you the benefit that the mill will eliminate a lot of the tail weight from your power head while you're milling. And with these 090s, they have what are called weather vane governors that will only, you set them for 8,000 RPMs, which is the saws are spec at, and you run at 8,000 RPMs, you set the throttle lock, and when you go under load, it'll idle up to 8,000 RPMs. And that's also why these are really these saws you want to use on a double-ended mill, because you can set the 8,000 RPM weather vane governors, and your saws will harmonize so you're not chewing up clutches, which are ridiculously expensive for big saws. Um, the other thing that this mill has is a witch. And I'm, you might have seen other people using these. I take this line out. I will hook it onto a pulley on the other end, run it back, and just loop it over that end to pull through wood. Now, I mill predominantly hardwoods, and with a lot of hardwoods, Using a winch is not really where it's at because you'll pull the saw into a bite on the log. Um, they just, these are big, powerful saws and with sharp teeth, they'll just lock right up and then you got to pull them back and constantly. With some of the softer hardwoods, Tulipifera in particular, um, and surprisingly, even with oak, which is very hard, but oak always cuts really nice you can use the winch. With conifers, softwood, spruce, pine, uh, fir trees, this thing is great, especially with big wood. It, it, you can just plow right through it. Um, I, I'm using 404 chain and, you know, up, up to the 36 inch, full 36 inch throat of my 36 inch mill. This thing is just, it, it's a terror. It's an absolute terror for way. It just moves right through it so nicely. All your time is spent on setup, very little back uh, time spent cutting. You know what I mean? It's, you go through stuff so fast, you really get production. If you set everything up first, <coughs> excuse me, so that you just have to move a rail from log to log, you can get quite a bit done with the chainsaw mill in the right conditions. Anyway, this is just a boat winch that I took off of an old boat trailer uh, that somebody was getting rid of. I saw it there. A friend of mine asked him if I could take it. They said, yes, it has free spool and it has crank, which is nice because I mill a lot of stuff that's long, 18, 24 foot. And uh, 24 foot, you're pulling out 28 foot of line. You don't want to have to crank it out. Um, plus, because it, it is a boat winch and it has the lock on there, it has a positive grab. So, as you pull in, it stays grabbing and stays grabbing. The down, and you, with the free spool, of course, if you do have to back up, you can hit this and just pull it back and it'll free spool out. It is a, it is a nice feature. Um, the issue also that I ran into here was without thinking, I didn't, you know, it never really dawned on me. This steel I bought, this frame steel, and at my steel yard, they cut it for me, which was great because they really did a precision job, you know, laser, laser band saws and everything was exactly what it needed to be, super precise. They even drilled the holes for me. They didn't charge me that much. And uh, for the time it saved me and the fact that I could just phone it in, it was great. Except for one thing. I was thinking to myself, 38 inch bar, or 36 inch bar, do a 36 inch mill. 
Unfortunately, a 36-inch bar, you can't put a 36-inch mill on it. I never really thought about that. Uh, this bar is an experimental bar that I got from Holzforma, which is Farmer Tech. I wanted to see how they ran. It's a hard-nosed 36-inch 404-063 gauge bar. And I got to tell you something. I'm really pleased with the way it held up um, so far. I, I use it a lot uh, because the idea was to see what it could take. And once upon a time, they were pretty cheap, but you know, all the tariffs and stuff that have gone on over the past couple years, it, the shipping makes it cheaper to buy a still bar. But you know, that being said, even if they were the same price or close, I would buy a still bar. Um, as good as this is, and it is pretty good, there is a difference between this and a still bar. Um, if it's what you could afford and you can find one cheap, then you get it and you use it. But you always try and buy the best tools possible. The still bar is just better steel. I find that I get a little less flex on the interior of the bar if there's a problem where I hit a nail or something with the, the mill and it, it doesn't run off as much. But uh, this bar is pretty good. Anyway, knowing that, I measured a my, one of my still 36-inch bars, too, and... They don't, even a still bar, this is a 28-inch mill and a still bar that's at the throat, okay, at the interior. And then you have to add 29 and 30, but you only have 33-inch of bar outside the saw on a 090 because of the way the neck is shaped here at the, at the power head where the clamping mechanism is. It comes way out, and I like to leave my dogs on, but even without the dogs on, on this saw, you're never getting... A, even a, a 30 inch mill on here I don't think by the time you lose to your taper on the head of the bar you know and that you need to be conscious of that if you're building your own mill you measure your bar you measure your actual usual, usual bar space this I cannot put on my Husqvarna 288 with the 28 inch bar on it <coughs> it'll clamp on the body of the saw even without the cutting dogs and the other end will be off the bar uh, like I said, I measured my still bar. It's about an inch longer than this bar, but it still won't be able to operate this uh, a mill any bigger than this. It's just the way it is. Anyway, that this is the 28-inch mill. It is a great mill. And um, before I bring up the next mill, let's get a close-up look at the chain that I use because I was telling you, I a mill with this mill on the 090s and the 18 inch mill I mill using just a regular semi chisel chain um, see if we can get this focused in here for you yeah there you go it's just a regular semi-chisel chain. I will run it until it gets dull as a milling chain without filing anything. Uh, just as a re on the regular pitch that it comes on, you have enough power with these smaller mills where it does not make a difference. Um, and then when I have to sharpen it, I just sharpen it square across. Now there's a benefit to doing that. And that is, let me get a mock file here. Is that you can tell I'm an old guy right here. Check this out. You can tell the old guy because he has one of these. <laughs> um, yep, not only do I have the old wooden ruler, it's got the depth gauge on the end. But anyway, the, the reason I like the zero degrees, and I do this with my ripping chains too, is because I can do teeth that are saw body oriented or cover plate oriented just by going the same direction on every tooth. So I can sharpen the saw from this side away from the mill without having to go through the mill to sharpen. And that makes a huge difference because right here, I can just on the mill, even at close, close in where I'm only milling an inch and a half, I can sharpen my whole one side of my chain right on down almost, I gotta move for that tooth. But you can just run right down the chain without swapping sides and without having to fight with your mill. And 
If you've ever had to sharpen a saw in the middle of milling, you know that, how, how beneficial that can be. Um, yeah, can you do it on the other angles too? Yeah, but it's a royal pain in the ass and it's hard to get everything right. Anyway, I find that my cuts with a good sharp factory sharp uh, semi chisel chain, outstanding. Outstanding quality cuts, nice, straight, smooth. The face of the wood comes nice and smooth. And once I go to zero, this is just every bit as clean as ripping chain. It's just that it's a matter of power, really. And with these big saws, these are 137 cc's, these old stills, 090s. Uh, and you're just pulling through that. I mean, it's not a hugely fast saw, but it is like a tractor. So anyway, that's why, that's how I... Uh, do all my filing on my saw teeth up to the 28 inch mill.